Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a video going over ultrabooks. Over the last 10 to 15 years, we've had a lot of different kinds of notebooks. So we've had normal laptops, we've had tiny little netbooks, we've had gigantic desktop replacements, and more. Of course, we did see some in 2011, including the Apple MacBook Air, as well as several Windows-based ultrabooks, including the Asus ZenBook. However, I think this year we're going to see a lot more. That's all fine and great, but what is an ultrabook? Well, in my opinion, there are three major things that separate an Ultrabook from your standard run-of-the-mill laptop. First off is the size. In general, Ultrabooks are very, very thin, most of them coming in at well under an inch thin. On top of that, the screen sizes are also fairly small, generally somewhere between 11 and 13 inches. What separates an Ultrabook from something like an Ultra Portable is the fact that an Ultrabook is really made to be a primary computer. So it's going to have plenty of speed and plenty of power to do most any task. Now you will be a little bit shy on ports for the most part as they're very thin, there's not a whole lot of room to add a lot, but for the most part it'll be just fine for most people. Of course, since they're so thin in length, the first thing that has to go is the optical drive. Now well, personally that's not a problem at all for me, I can't remember the last time I used a CD or a DVD or a Blu-ray. If it is an issue for you, you can easily get an external DVD burner, you can just toss it in your bag, which is not a really big deal considering just how small, thin, and light an Ultrabook really is. The second thing that sets an Ultrabook apart from other laptops is the fact that they pretty much all have a solid state drive. Now a solid state drive, also known as an SSD, is simply a collection of computer chips that serve as a hard drive, very similar to a flash drive, but of course much, much faster. In comparison, most computers today have what's known as a mechanical hard drive. Now while there are some pros with this, most notably the fact that you're going to have a lot more storage space than on an SSD, for the most part a solid state drive is just way better in a lot of different areas. It's going to be a lot faster, of course, generally by three to four times depending on which solid state drive you get. It's also going to be a lot quieter since there are no moving parts, there's nothing to make any noise. And since there are no moving parts, you're a lot less prone to getting something destroyed if you drop or shake your laptop. So that's really nice if you do a lot of traveling or whatever because it's very difficult to damage a chip. You would really have to bust it up pretty good. They also put out less heat, which is very important when you consider just how thin most Ultrabooks are, and they take less power, which can give you a little bit more battery life. In my opinion, once you get a solid state drive, you never want to go back. Not only does this allow Ultrabooks to be nice and thin, nice and light, but on top of that it gives them plenty of speed, plenty of power to keep up with standard laptops. The third thing that separates Ultrabooks from other laptops is the speed and battery life. In general, when you look at something that's this thin, this portable, it's either going to be very anemic and hardly have any power at all, or it's going to have about, roughly about 10 seconds of battery life. The great thing is, neither of these really is the case. Pretty much all Ultrabooks come with either an Intel Core i3, Core i5, Core i7 ultra low voltage processor. This means you really can have your cake and eat it too, with battery life that can exceed 5 hours in a tiny thin chassis, and with enough power to do some moderate tasks like web browsing and all that kind of stuff, but on top of that, you can also do some more heavy things such as gaming and even video editing. As far as I'm concerned, the only real downside to an Ultrabook is the fact that they're fairly pricey. However, I do expect this to change as this year there are going to be a lot of new Ultrabooks. And of course, I will be taking a look at as many as I can next week at CES. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this little informational video. As always, if you have any feedback on the video or you want to see me cover something else next time, be sure to leave it in the comments section below. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to leave it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe.